uh, this ano no this uh, downward spiral no so uh, such that many SMEs have uh, have really um, uh, depleted their cash or run out of cash uh, totally no and it came as a shock to many of us because uh, you know especially for us in the retail business no we we had been spoiled no uh, Filipinos are love their malls and are a mall going culture no. Um, and this is the kind of traffic that we enjoyed uh, pre-COVID. No? This is how many people, uh, this is what our malls look like. Uh, but in a blink of an eye, uh, overnight, um, the traffic was all gone. No? Um, and uh, people uh, locked themselves at home or were forced to uh, lock themselves at home. Um, and uh, business and demand virtually uh, uh, disappeared. Um, this was a slide that uh, I, I, I showed in a talk way back in April, no? And it was, you know, the, this is how it looked back then in April. Um, and this was, I think, from um, probably from uh, IATF. And uh, they were anticipating that, you know, there would be only a two-week lockdown, a two-week extension of the lockdown. Um, and that uh, by the end of April, uh, we would uh, s uh, slowly be allowed to reopen. Uh, majority of businesses would be already allowed to reopen. And uh, even the health situation, uh, the government uh, foresaw that the peak infections would be by around April 14. And uh, with only 23,000 uh, infections, uh, and then hopefully uh, flattening the curve by then, and things would start to improve. Um, as we all know, that's not exactly what happened. Um, but that's what we planned for back then. No? Many business owners like uh, myself no, were planning for the flattening the curve after only two to three months, reopening of the economy and restoration of public transit, um, and a gradual return to normal around June or July, latest June, latest July. No? Um, so we were, uh, we, we, uh, we, uh, no, we, uh, we supported our employees through two months of lockdowns. No? Uh, in April and May, despite most of us not having any revenues uh, at all uh, due to ECQ, no, um, we advanced uh, leaves and tried to uh, support uh, as much as we could uh, uh, payrolls by advancing leaves and 13th month pay, um, resulting in many cases, uh, including our company's case, a huge net loss uh, in uh, March and April. No, um, Because as you can imagine, we were uh, we had very high expenses and uh, little to no revenues. Um, and we were hoping, counting it back then, that there would hopefully be some support for, uh, from government, for, for especially for SMEs. What actually happened, as you, we, we all know, cases rose and rose. No? Um, and testing was still difficult and still expensive. Um, and tracing was still uh, inefficient. Um, there were still blanket lockdowns um, in vast you know, uh, areas, uh, still limited public transportation, limitations on movements of goods and people. And for me, one of the biggest things is not just the presence of, the continued presence of fear, but even heightening of fear to go back out uh, and uh, return to the malls, the stores, restaurants. No? Um, in the meantime, uh, businesses, many businesses that I know of had, had been running out of cash uh, with uh, sales performances uh, ranging from 50 uh, to 7, 50 to 80 percent decline uh, versus last year, especially even when we reopened in May, June, and July. No? Uh, hence, uh, the layoffs uh, uh, started um, as early as probably May, uh, some even earlier, and have, have been accelerating. As businesses have seen, you know, that the situation was not getting better. No? The sales decline was still around 70, uh, 80% uh, persistently across, uh, from across June all the way to August. No? And especially in August when the ECQ was uh, reimposed in, in Metro Manila. And from what I hear, at least among uh, colleagues, is there are many, many closures. Um, you, you can read about all of, many of them in the news. 
and uh, many you can't you don't read about uh, about businesses having to close bankruptcies being declared uh, and even more layoffs um, this is something that was shared to me by a uh, friend who is a high, high highly placed executive you know, at Google and apparently this is publicly available um, this is statistics from Google which you can easily look up with the uh, URL below uh, showing uh, the mobility of people in the Philippines. Um, and on the left side, it shows that uh, as of August 30, six months after the start of COVID, uh, the mobility of uh, our general population is still down 48% no, from uh, normal compared to baseline. No? Uh, and uh, you can see in transit, transit stations, it's 61%, workplaces, 24%. Uh, and uh, apparently, this data is even across uh, different uh, localities. No, uh, uh, one every city is being tracked by Google. No, you have Baguio here, Cagayan de Oro, Metro Manila, Davao, and uh, you can see exactly how much uh, you know people are moving or not moving uh, around. No, uh, I think this is data based on uh, Google Maps. No, and uh, how they track uh, people's movements through uh, probably ways or, or, or you know, through a GPS. No? Um, so this is uh, information I, I, I would hope, I'm sure I would hope many mayors already know. No? Um, uh, and the conclusions here is, are, are, are pretty, you know, you know, um, pretty bleak. No? Um, basically it shows that the Philippines is still way down in terms of foot traffic for especially for retail grocery and transit compared to Indonesia and Vietnam and our economy because our economy is consumer driven this can really be used as a leading indicator of spending and it doesn't look good it shows that our ASEAN neighbors will recover definitely faster than us because their numbers are much higher than us uh, after the after six months no? Uh, and for us business owners, it's really bad news because it shows that business will still be bad you know, until things change, until uh, mobility increases. Some case studies that uh, I have personal uh, knowledge of, no, oops, sorry, uh, personal knowledge of um, just two case studies, both in the retail industry. Uh, uh, case study one no, is a chain with 100 store, 100 plus stores. At the start of uh, ECQ, they already had to furlough 30% of their workforce. Uh, by by June, they those 30% uh, uh, were retrenched you know, uh, permanently, and by August, uh, a further 20% uh, of their workforce uh, had to be retrenched simply because of low demand. So 50% total retrenchment. And for retailer number two, with 50 plus stores. Uh, in May, 20% of the workforce was retrenched. By June, um, they had started uh, deciding on which stores to close. And it is September, um, those closures have had to uh, been executed already because the business in those areas was just not sustainable. So again, 40% total workforce retrenchment. And you don't have to look far to see how bad it is. You know, even for the biggest businesses, the ones with uh, who should should be uh, um, immune to any kind of crisis because they cater to um, um, a wide range, uh, the mass market, uh, and are a necessity. You no know, food, despite that, Jollibee really closing 255 stores after a 200 million dollar loss uh, in the first half is really alarming. Because if it's that bad for them, um, I'm sure you can just imagine how bad it is for many other businesses who are much much less. Uh, uh, well positioned and uh, well funded, uh, and not doing as well as Jollibee. Um, just a guess on how many people unemployed, uh, 255 times, 225 times 30 people per store, and that's 6,700 people. Um, okay, I, I, I just want to share a roadmap that I, our business and many other business owners use um, in, in trying to navigate uh, the crisis, which may be helpful to, to, to the to business owners here or those uh, who the, your LGUs help. No? Um, and this was done by a U.S., uh, one of the biggest U.S. consulting firms. No? 
And basically, I'll just summarize the three things that uh, we took away from this report was we just had to uh, predict how bad it would be. And uh, we predicted 20% decline as probable, 25% as bad, and 30% as really bad. Um, and unfortunately, uh, uh, what happened in reality exceeded even our worst expectations. No? So it's, it's much more than a 30% decline for most businesses. Um, and then second advice in this paper was to identify already what costs cut for each scenario and uh, be prepared to make those cuts uh, should the situation turn out really bad. No? And the third was this is a war. No? Um, the advice of Bain was you know, set up a war room because they, basically all businesses are uh, going into a situation where we, we are faced with Really big, really big crisis um, equivalent to going to war. No? Um, so that's what we did. We set up a war room, and this was the battle plan, as again, as dictated by, by Bain. And the first step was on the left, which was to protect the uh, employees. And that's precisely what we did. We tried to help tide them over and make sure that they could meet, uh, meet their needs uh, through the first uh, phase of lockdown uh, in April and May. And then we worked on our financials and tried to predict the future and prepare for it. And then the third was defend against revenue declines, <clears throat> which to a certain extent, um, at least our company, we're very fortunate. Um, we supply products which are in high demand now, like fitness equipment, because people have a very high, a renewed uh, emphasis on health and uh, have been uh, very interested in getting equipment for their homes like treadmills, exercise bikes. So we bikes so we've done relatively well compared to others and yet we could not defend uh, fully defend against a revenue decline. Um, June was very good, but unfortunately July uh, people were became more scared because of the rising cases. And then of course in August the uh, ECQ was uh, uh, MECQ was uh, uh, reimposed. So as much as we wanted to stabilize operations to a new normal, that was virtually impossible because things were changing so fast. No, we didn't. We couldn't predict what would happen tomorrow, uh, whether the malls would be allowed to open, whether people, whether even if the malls were allowed to open, whether people would go back to start going back to the mall. So it was very difficult to stabilize uh, uh, operations and revenue. So we're now at four number four, no, which is to plan urgent cost take out to conserve cash. And I think many businesses um, are probably in the same boat, no? um, or even got to this step much, much earlier, where they're really now having forced to look at, you know, what do we have to do to survive, to, to stay alive? And, and that's really cost cutting. Um, and uh, what does that look like? No? Um, uh, cost cutting, sorry. Um, uh, it's really about uh, aggressive break glass cost actions. No? Um, but Siguro, just to share quickly, no? uh, one way that our company uh, attempted to defend against revenue declines, which is something we've been doing for the past several years, is to um, emphasize our, the digital part of our business. I'm sure everyone here uh, knows that e-commerce uh, really uh, 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 boomed during uh, lockdowns because everybody was staying home and there was no other way to, to shop. No? So especially Metro Manila where e-commerce is much more, more businesses are digitalized and, and uh, online. Um, many businesses were able to divert some of their uh, uh, sales to, to online channels, same as us. No? So we have a very strong emphasis on our websites, tobis.com, um, urbanathletics.com and uh, soon to launch also runner.com.ph. Um, and thankfully that helped us uh, so much, so much so that in April and May, sales from our online channels were, was as much as 50 to 75% of our, our volume. Um, so that helped us uh, and will we'll help many, many other businesses uh, as, as they shift to, to online. You know? for, for I think those in the provincial areas, it's not yet as uh, uh, well well adopted, and not many businesses, not as many businesses are as well prepared. 
for the shift to online. But that's something that uh, should definitely be encouraged. You know? um, so we've, we, we, we really emphasized and uh, doubled down on that to include buyer selling. Um, we added digital payment methods, you know, et cetera. And this is really a must have now in this day and age where uh, people are shopping more from home, from their, from their phones. Um, and basically that's the only way that uh, some businesses can generate revenue. Um, uh, especially say restaurants, which cannot uh, do dine-in, etc. Um, so in spite of that, no, um, uh, yeah, just to point out that uh, e-commerce was also already rising pre-COVID, but because of COVID, that, that has just simply accelerated uh, much, much faster. Um, and e-commerce is predicted to grow in the Philippines. Um, was, was predicted to grow at 18%. I'm sure it's going to be even higher. But again, we're, we're on the fourth phase already, which despite, despite our best efforts, no, um, many businesses, uh, even ours, are really uh, having to um, break the glass already, emergency uh, um, protocols already, because revenue in July and August, uh, which we had hoped was already on an upward trend, uh, instead uh, went down even further. No? So this is... Uh, um, the reality now. Um, so um, many businesses, it's just really, you know, the, the sentiment is really that we are fighting a war. And unfortunately, many of, many of those businesses are losing uh, that war. This is the casualties. And I, I take this uh, to heart because um, uh, while these are not the exact people, we, we had to uh, let go of 110 employees, about 12% uh, of our workforce, you know. Um, who are agency personnel no, or uh, third party, um, but yet you know those those were people who were valuable to us and contributed. But we had no choice. No, um, yeah. it's only ten percent. But what I'm worried about is um, you know it might not be the last of uh, uh, our layoffs as well. No? So um, I, I hope uh, you'll, you'll allow that um, you know many business owners like myself have been um, really putting our heads together to try to figure out you know, how we can work together with government, with LGUs, with the IATF, um, and today with, with uh, uh, LGUs through, through all of you mayors no, to find ways no, uh, to help us deal with this crisis because business is really uh, suffering. Um, and the first one is uh, is on the on, on the aspect of rules, you know, uh, the uniformity and the consistency. Um, there have been many cases where IATF rules were not simultaneously implemented or were not interpreted the same way. Um, uh, even curfew rules, quarantine pass rules, and especially checkpoints, you know, where sometimes it's it's uh, painfully confusing. Um, and sometimes really uh, cannot, it could not be understood. For instance, um, sticker requirements for, uh, oh, sorry, rapid test requirements for truck drivers who are bringing goods from Manila to Baguio, but are stopped um, halfway, say, in Tarlac for, uh, to check if they have a rapid test um, and, and, and the right stickers in order to be allowed to pass through. So, Truly, there's not yet that unhampered movement of, of goods, uh, which is very, very important. Um, second, uh, continuous education information to, to our local communities, you know, from simple things such as mask wearing, social distancing, hand washing, and PPEs. Um, a good friend of mine uh, um, um, cited that the, the, the study is only 40% of people really wear masks uh, properly. No, especially at the barangay level. No? So that's still something we need to work on. Um, and then for providing uh, data um, to the public uh, about their barangay, uh, the number of cases, the doubling time, and even the hospital capacity, because that would be the best way to modify behavior um, by knowing that the cases are rising or the hospital bed capacity is, is limited or declining and case doubling is getting faster and faster, people will take more precautions. Um, so I think 
that's something that has worked in many other uh, countries. No? Um, and if we can make it, if that make that information easily accessible uh, through online means, and even local establishments, no, um, Big Paterno of 7-Eleven uh, uh, shared with me their initiative to help local barangays uh, display that information uh, on the on the storefronts of 7-Eleven, no, to do exactly that, no, um, to show the barangay level data. Um, and allow for more algorithmic lockdowns and local lockdown scenarios um, by showing the barangay spread on the doors will help that community know exactly what the situation is in their area and what precautions they need to take. Um, so equipping the public with knowledge will help them behave hopefully in the right way. Number four, implement rules that balance safety and the need to reopen the economy. Um, some that you know, some business owners cited were the curfew restrictions for minors. Um, 16 and above could possibly be responsible enough to socially distance, and everyone younger can can and should always be accompanied by an adult. No, uh, I feel the pain as well as a father to young kids, no young 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 boys who I cannot take out at all. Um, so we can't go, you know, eat, take out food even recreate, do recreation outside, sports and recreation outside because of these uh, um, restrictions for minors. Um, jeepneys, and that is a huge industry that has been affected. Um, jeepney drivers are especially hard hit. But if we allow air-conditioned shuttles and buses, hopefully socially distanced jeeps could be okay also. Of course, restaurants, uh, which are the lifeblood of many, many employees, uh, employ so many. and uh, Give life to the malls, no, um, but allow, of course, limited seating capacity. And then something again, I mentioned close to my, you know, my 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 heart, no, is uh, recreation. Uh, be allowed to exercise um, in public parks. No? Um, testing and tracing. Um, some some LGUs have been very very good at this uh, and have provided uh, easy means and and cheaper means to access testing. And even incentivize uh, some those to get tested because sometimes, um, in our experience, some of our people are hesitant to get tested because they're they're worried that if they are positive, um, they will they will be quarantined or sent to a quarantine facility. So some LGUs have developed ways to incentivize people to get tested uh, aside from the sub. Uh, more efficient tracing. Uh, there are many groups I know of at least two groups. Who are working on technology, uh, app-based, mobile-based technology to allow for more efficient contact tracing, um, and I'm more than uh, welcome to pass those contacts on no, for for use of uh, LGUs. One is a uh, group where uh, involved, where where Victor Paterno, the CEO of 7-Eleven, is, is involved, and another group, no, totally non-profit, that you know are are trying to help uh, make it. Uh, testing more efficient to to allow the possibility of isolation or lockdown only for the most affected areas instead of blanket uh, lockdown. Uh, number six is I'm I'm sure many LGUs are already working on this, especially the first one, the you know, one-stop renewal of permits and moving everything online. The second one has been a pain point for many businesses like ours, no, to to allow more flexibility for employee arrangements like floating or furlough, so we don't have to lay them off right away no um kasi if hindi pwede yung full floating or furlough businesses might not have a choice then lay off na lang ang ano mangyayari um in practical labor safety protocols some retailers uh, have have raised this issue with me that they're they're being uh, cited for an infraction that they don't have a quarantine facility in their store which is really impractical, no? improbable, that there'd be enough space to quarantine because we can just send the employee home anyway. No? Um, and then finally, since a lot are losing jobs, um, you know, if, if LGUs can help those people become entrepreneurs, make it easy for them to start new businesses, provide micro microfinancing, education, and the network of uh, connecting to a network of suppliers uh, in the street. Um, because many of the unemployed will have no choice but to start uh, their own businesses. And then finally, allow gradual reopening. Um, and I think this is really uh, where we're headed 
towards, no, hopefully. Um, those at risk can stay at home, less at risk can go out. Um, but hopefully with more information and education, the public can take care of themselves and manage the risks uh, properly themselves. Because there's so much at stake for, for them anyway. They'll, they'll be quarantined, they'll be on no work, no pay if they get sick. And of course, you know, all the costs of getting sick. And then finally, um, one request I have for LGUs, we have as business owners for LGUs, is to even go as far as encourage public spending and consumption. Uh, I, I got a great suggestion this morning from uh, Josiah Go, no, noted uh, marketing author and uh, consultant, um, on how LGUs can help. And his advice was LGUs can run their own initiatives to stimulate consumption in their areas, um, citing something that was done in China that the government, uh, LGUs, um, really operated like a business and did marketing to promote the businesses in their area. Um, uh, even to include even a voucher, yung mga sales promo, uh, uh, promo voucher uh, that uh, could be used uh, in establishments within their community uh, to precisely to stimulate uh, consumption. No? and uh, even run uh, competitions between among LGUs for those which could be could launch the most creative uh, most creative promotions for, for consumption and of course LGUs which experience the least business closures or the fastest business recovery uh, but a sobering reality or truth is that layoffs are inevitable no? and it's all over the news already. The employment, unemployment rate is so high, sky high. No? Uh, and again, even a business like ours, which is doing relatively well uh, during the crisis, had to let go of people. No? Um, so there will be more and more unemployed. There already are so many unemployed. And one advocacy that uh, we're pushing in entrepreneurs' organization is to reskill and upskill uh, those who are laid off and repurposing uh, for, for higher talent level. Uh, with so many unemployed, you know, we, we need to help them find jobs uh, eventually. Because really, we all know relief goods and feeding can only last so long. So, uh, we need to teach them to fish and provide them with uh, uh, better hired skills so they can be reemployed later on. Uh, and instead, and, and LGUs can partner with organizations and companies who can teach and train these skills required to provide employment to their communities. Um, last, I think it's just, you know, um, my, a request from us business owner is to help change the mindset of the public that we can and have no choice but to live with the virus. Um, for a developing country, third world countries such as ours, the forecast is uh, we will have to live with it until a vaccine is widely available to our to our population by 2022 and that until then we need to go back to a semblance of normal life somehow that aside from lowering the number of covid cases hopefully we all uh, agree it's important also to lower the number of layoffs um, and business closures which is really accelerating as we speak uh, and finally, spending and consumption need to happen for businesses to survive. Um, no ifs or buts. Because uh, if we can't, uh, and if those businesses close, um, there will be more lives affected because of all the layoffs. To end, um, um, a quote that uh, uh, it's not, it's really courage is not the absence of fear, uh, but rather action in the face of fear. I'm confident that uh, many um, in, in government and in, in, in uh, your, your local government units uh, are acting uh, and, and will act uh, so that we can all overcome uh, this fear that has faced us for the past few months. Um, this ends my talk. Maraming maraming salamat. Thank you very much, po, Sir Toby, for that very insightful discussion. Now, we will now be opening the floor for our questions from our mayors. So sa ating mayors, you may send your questions in the chat. And babasahin ko po muna yung previously ay nasend. So for our first question po, 
Given the current unemployment figures and the percentage of labor force that is connected to SMEs, is there a point where it is too late for some industries already, like the Marikina shoe industry, for example? Uh, it's a very tough question to answer, but there are many, uh, clearly many, many industries that uh, have, have been, you know, uh, totally uprooted and uh, ano, ano, uh, changed uh, because of this pandemic. Um, and I think uh, that's what business owners are struggling with now to figure out how they can pivot, how they can change, um, uh, retool, revise their business model. Um, so they'll need all the help they can get. No? Um, I think um, there, there are clearly going to be many industries, many companies, which uh, unfortunately, have been devastated like, by this, uh, by by the pandemic. Not just the pandemic, but the change in consumer behavior as a result of the pandemic. Um, and in many cases, they they they, they would they will have no choice but to close and uh, restart as something else. Hopefully, they get help to do that. Uh, another question here, Po. In our LGU, we have MSMEs compared to Toby Sports being a large retailer. Can you share some MSMEs perspective on how we can further help them aside from giving local aid? Uh, one right now is uh, no, eh? um, somehow supporting our, our workforce. Eh? Um, you know, it pains us every every payday that uh, we have to decide uh, how much we can uh, support the payroll, how many days we can uh, allow people to come into work, um, how many stores we should open or just keep closed. Um, and it's all really a result of no demand. You know, people are too scared to go out, um, too scared, much less spend. You know? So, but but when we look at other areas like uh, Italy, France, we were there in March and, and we saw that people stopped moving, you know, people locked down because they they were really uh, overwhelmed by the pandemic. And now everything's, uh, you know, almost normal. Um, but I, I don't think it's because their, their cases are down. It's just that they somehow learned that it's not going to go away just like that, but uh, they just have to live with it. And for most businesses, that's the simple and best way to get us help get us back on our feet is just to um, somehow convince the public that they can uh, go back um, and start doing what they used to do, start patronizing the same establishments or the same products that they used to, uh, in order to you know allow us to uh, maximize employment and go back to our regular. Uh, I, I that that might not have answered your specific question about uh, small and medium, no. But that's where it all starts. Without demand, um, any business from small to large won't have a chance. Thank you, Sir Toby. Uh, Mayors, meron pa po ba kayong questions? You may use the raise hand option if nanghirapan po kayo sa chat. Mayor Erlan, would you like to ask a question, po? Okay, na po. <laughs> Thank you. All right, last call, po, for questions. Uh, from Mayor Rex, po, of Tenay Rizal, what are the challenges sa pag-shift sa online? Um. That's a very relevant question, no, uh, Mayor. Um, the first is, uh, no, uh, actually, it's not that hard. It's not that hard. In fact, many businesses, many individuals are already doing it uh, as a backyard industry talaga, through Facebook, Facebook Marketplace, um, through Viber. Um, and, and nowadays, it's so much easier to launch uh, an online effort either through marketplaces like Lazada, Shopee, um, Zalora, or like we, we did, we, we launched our own. No? Um, and there are platforms like, say, Shopify, 
uh, which are very, very user friendly to use para to, to start uh, doing um, to start doing online uh, uh, selling no uh, but like i said lazada pa lang that, that a lot and uh, and uh, viber communities um, uh, i guess the biggest challenge is finding people who know how to do it um, and that's something i can uh, help some businesses also uh, from our experiences no um, and there are many companies already providing that service in, in, in the philippines uh, on how to get started with their, your own e-commerce. Um, so I think that's something that if, if LGUs uh, could provide to local businesses and really promote and, and uh, uh, push uh, that local businesses do. Um, because until there is a vaccine, mobility may still be hampered and people will still want things delivered, will want, or want to order online. So the earlier and the faster people uh, uh, add uh, online or e-commerce to their business, Okay, Paul. Thank you, Sir Toby. Um, for next, our next question, Sir Harvike would like to ask. Um, hi, Sir Toby. Um, you keep on mentioning that we need to hopefully encourage people to try to get back to that normal routine of probably going back to um, restaurants because the restaurant business has really been hit terribly, to say the least. No. Um, Talagang massive talaga yung losses ng mga restaurants and even some of my favorite restaurants have, are actually closed shop. Um, and going back to that normal life of uh, going to the stores uh, that they, they, ha they are used to. No? But given the problem that there's so much fear uh, of contracting the virus outside, um, halimbawa, even uh, all of this news saying na probably COVID is airborne, probably COVID, you can get it when you eat the restaurant, when you go to a store, hindi mo alam kung sino makakasama mo doon. Um, how, what, what, what do you think should LGUs do to, to help allay those fears and to be able to convince more people to start going back to that normal routine and to help prop up business as well? Yeah, I, I know it's a fine balancing act between encouraging uh, consumption and uh, putting people at risk. No? But... Um, I, I think that balance just has to be found. Um, of course, distancing within the restaurants, limited capacity. Um, and I've eaten in, in restaurants several times. No? Uh, the, the partitions, I think, are very effective. Um, not having, uh, having a lot of outdoor capacity would be a uh, big, big help. No more outdoor capacity. Um, and then in, if indoor, uh, the air conditioning system should really not be... Um, you know, circulating air too, too aggressively so that uh, you're not spreading things, no? Uh, because if you if you did the distancing, you had the partitions, you have open air, air uh, good ventilation and open spaces, the risk is, is not that high. No? I won't say it's, it's non-existent, but it's not as high uh, as other countries have shown, no? Um, and of course, promoting takeout, promoting because even even takeout is challenged because uh, people are too too scared to go go out and you know yeah. Uh, yeah. get it, no? or even too scared to order out uh, because nahawakan yung food nila or something. So so that alone is is challenged. No? I mean, I, I think slowly but surely people really have to understand that their best protection against the virus is themselves, is their body, you know, and. I hesitate to use myself as an example, but um, I, I'm probably a COVID recovered case because I may have been exposed way back in March when I was in a, in a different country. But the only symptom I had was a severe loss of smell. Talagang I lost smell, totally lost it. And it was only for two days and nothing else, no other symptoms. Um, I didn't come down with a fever or anything. And then a few months later, in uh, last month, I took a rapid test and it, it turned out that I was IgG positive, which meant I already had antibodies from my exposure several months prior. Uh, so only late, only then did I realize I may have already got uh, been exposed and contracted COVID, but it was such a mild case that because my, my hopefully my immune system was strong enough to fend it off, that I'm now, uh, I'm now hopefully protected again. So there are many streams, of course, for every example like that, there's an example of someone who was direly and, 
and, and fatally infected with COVID. But, you know, I think people who are more susceptible, more at risk, have no business going out to a restaurant. You know? If they are high, high risk, um, um, have uh, underlying symptoms or, or older, don't risk it. Don't go out. Okay? But there are there's a substantial amount of the, the population who are less at risk, more healthy, younger, who can and uh, who who can protect themselves if they wear the proper PPE, etc. Take the proper risk. So to answer your question specifically, businesses can do. We can and we've been spending on those uh, safeguards within our uh, premises, within our stores, within our restaurants. Uh, to protect people when they're there, you know, and the rest is up to the people to protect themselves, so that somehow we can get back to normal. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. And up next, Doctor Cora Claudio would like to raise a point and share a few from the previous questions. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, Paul. Okay. Uh, first, I congratulate uh, your group, uh, the host of this uh, event, for choosing the topic which includes people-centered recovery. I chair the uh, MAP, Management Association of the Philippine Sustainable Development Committee and Partners, and we are guided by the 17 UN Sustainable Development Goals that all LGUs are also asked to uh, follow or to adapt in their local communities. The third of these SDGs is good health and well-being. So if we shall have a people-centered recovery, we really have to focus on the physical part of the people uh, whom we govern. And uh, that should include uh, physical activities, sports, and others uh, at both the individual and community levels. So I think the challenge is for um, LGU officials and uh, uh, managers of sports establishments like Toby, uh, I call him the improvement of the race, <laughs> to uh, work together to develop community-oriented uh, sports uh, and exercises during this pandemic, you know, when, where social distancing is uh, uh, we, will have to be followed. Now, let me give an example. Many of our communities are in coastal areas where I assume that the air is better and uh, there is really a challenge for us to teach our people to, uh, to do uh, exercises in our coastal areas, including swimming. But uh, many of our people do not know how to swim, right? So I think this is the time to focus on activities like this, not only at the individual, but at the community levels where the LGUs can help uh, their, uh, their communities to, to do. Thank you po, Dr. Cora, for your sharing. Uh, for our next question po, Mayor Jun Jun Haen of Leganes Iloilo would like to ask. Thank you, uh, I Sir Toby. Uh, Mayor. This question po, is it uh, advisable to open up a business at this point? Just uh, uh, a there are many, actually, there are many uh, industries where I think, or many business models which I think uh, could be successful uh, at this time. No? Um, and I've seen many uh, uh, start up uh, in just a quick, you know, uh, quick period of time. No? Um, um, anything, you know, relate, if you're looking for you know, anything that's related to helping people fortify their homes. Uh, helping them uh, uh, improve their ano nga, um, improve um, uh, their ability to to work, to recreate, to exercise at home is something that uh, has benefited us. No? Um, uh, food delivery, any any logistics delivery, talaga is, has just been uh, booming now. No, um, but to be honest, Mayor, I think there there for every industry that you can start now, there are ten industries that must close. So. It's very hard to find, um, um, you know, something to pivot to, but there are, there are, and 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 bottom line, we have to encourage uh, 
uh, people, especially those who are newly unemployed or you, their old businesses have failed, uh, to find and uh, do those new things that, uh, that, that can be successful. Uh, there are, I, I believe there are. You know, there, there are new needs. People need to feel safe um, um, and, and, and uh, protected. They, they need uh, to be healthy. Education, uh, tutors lang, you know, um, I, I think are in high demand now. Uh, fitness trainers who can do virtual, uh, virtual training, uh, virtual teaching. Um, there are many, I think, many industries, uh, many, many new things that can be started uh, if you really have to. Thank you, sir. Uh, before normal times, before the pandemic, uh, our LGU used to have a uh, weekend market. Uh, marami pong mga taong pumupunta niya kasi yung, yung bayan po namin is a uh, shrine po. So maraming nagsisimba sa bayan namin and uh, connected to that is we, we have a weekend market na maraming nagtitinda ng mga kung ano-ano ng mga parang ano siya, parang divisoria yung weekend, yung yeah, bayan yeah, namin, parang yeah. gano'n. Oh. Yung bukay, parang lahat na kung yeah, ano yeah. gamit. What is your opinion? Kasi ngayon, ngayon po, sir, hindi namin binalik yung weekend market namin. Eh. Kasi, siyempre, yeah. yung mga tao, takot din. At saka, para safe din sa, safe din sa mga, mga constituents ko po. Uh, yung mga nagtitinda kasi dati, naghihingi na ng, you're already asking if uh, when can they start operating their business. So, what is your opinion with regards to that? Um, I, I think that's actually that, that's a good problem to have because obviously there's demand you know, uh, for, for a market. There will always be demand for uh, fresh produce, uh, food. No? Um, ang, ang nag-iba lang is kung paano, pa, paano makukuha ng tao. Um, and we, we had to contend with that same problem because we have 66 stores. Ayaw pumunta ng mga tao sa mall. So how do we get them to, to buy? Um, we, we, we did two things. Um, we enabled the uh, chat and collect. So sa Viber, pwede kang magsabi kung ano yung kailangan mo. And then uh, either, two, two things, either pwede mo i-pick up sa tindahan na hindi ka napapasok, iahatid namin sa, sa main, main entrance ng mall, or ipapadeliver namin sa inyo. Uh, we, we'll deliver the items straight to you from the nearest store. No? Um, Sa, sa Palenque, from what I heard, I, I, I think it was uh, Mayor Vico in, in, our, in our place in Pasig na nagka-mobile Palenque na sila na iniikot yung, ano, yung, yung uh, mga paninda uh, using uh, small trucks or vehicles so that the, the sellers could still sell their produce uh, street to street. Um, kasi yun na nga, para hindi mag-congregate, hindi magsiksikan sa isang area dinadala sa kanila yung uh, produkto. So so we in our case we use technology um, and it's just a matter of being able to serve the consumer demand in a in a different way less uh, less yung centralized yung business sila yung pupunta sa inyo um, yung produkto yung pupunta sa kanila. Um, another example is uh, I, know, I know a retail business friend of mine na uh, ang dami niyang tindahan pero dahil walang tao sa tindahan walang ginagawa yung mga tao niya sa tindahan. So, all his employees na may motor, uh, he, tasks, he tasks to uh, sell and deliver uh, items directly to customer. No? So, they just shifted their mindset na imbis na maghihintay sila na pumunta sa kanila yung mga customer, sila na nagdadala na ng items uh, to the customer uh, themselves. So, I, I, I don't know exactly how it can apply directly to produce or, or uh, ano, ano, uh, fresh goods, but I think that's the only choice. Kung hindi man kaya na uh, central area na maraming tao magsasama-sama, then i-dadalin sa kanila yun. Po, kasi po, yung, meron din kami mga mobile eh. Nagkaroon din kami ng mga mobile market. Pero kulang eh. Kulang yung, you've been mentioning about the, ano, the, the tindahan. Uh, part din yan ng weekend market namin kasi yung mga katabing bayan po namin doon pa nagtitinda sa amin eh, din yung mga gulay uh, yung mo 
mobile naman, na try namin, pero parang nakukulangan pa rin yung tao. Tapos yung isa pang problema din, walang competition. So if walang competition, mataas yung presyo. So yung hinihingi talaga ng DAO na kung meron pa, kung, kung pwede rin ibalik yung weekend market kasi doon nagkakamura yung tao, yun lang yung danger is that, you know, hindi natin alam kung paano na kung ma-handle ba natin yung social distancing at yung safety din ng tao na hindi sila ma-infect ma, ma, ma yung virus. So kung ikaw po yung tatanungin po sir, will you allow na uh, uh, weekend market? Now I know how tough it is to be a mayor. <laughs> uh, that's a tough question to answer. Um, the only way I would do it if I were to do it was would, would be really to schedule yung scheduling na uh, oh pwede kayo lahat pero hindi kayo pwede sabay-sabay. Uh, ito yung time slot, ito yung number of slots available for this hour. Uh, pag napuno yan, scheduling na lang because mas ma- pwedeng araw-araw pero hindi sabay-sabay. Uh, so konti lang yung density talaga ng ng tao. Weekends really po sir, weekends. Oh, y- yun lang kung weekends lang no. But you know, I'm also hopeful that there's a way to bring it online, to make a public market with several sellers, so that they can compete on price and um, transparent yeah. yung uh, yung labanan sa sa presyo online. Um, yeah, and hopefully some you know somebody yeah, can come up with a solution. Like I I know my wife does grocery online all the time. No? So marketing online is also uh, not uh, far possible. Okay, yung problema na sir, yung mga nagtitinda sa amin galing pa mga bundok eh. So, <laughs> di, di masyado marunong. Kasi fresh yung mga vegetables na dinadala nila. Mga isda, tinda, galing pang agong huli lang. Mga well, yun yung ano, doon papasok yung upskill, upskilling na ano, o may makaturo lang sa kanila mag, uh, mag-viber o mag-post uh, sa Facebook. Um, I know, you know, in our case, marami kami pinibili para sa sarili naming ano, mga fresh produce, mga um, uh, meat, meat gulay uh, online through mga, mga sellers. So, yung, mga yung mga nagtitinda, yung mga nagtitinda kasi sa amin siya, puro mga dayo din eh. Hindi taga amin. At uh, so halos dayo. Lang so thank you, sir. Well, you, you, all right, thank you so much po, Mayors, for all your questions. Before we let Sir Toby go, may we ask for a virtual photo of? Pwede po bang mag-on ng video ang ating Mayors? All right, ready po? In three, two, one. One more po. Three, two, one. All right. Once again, maraming salamat po, Sir Toby, for joining us and sharing your learnings on how you manage crisis in Toby Sports. Maraming salamat po, and we hope to still see you in our next events in the. Maraming salamat din. Thank you to all the mayors. It is truly an honor. Thank you po. And now, since marami po sa inyong mayors natin ay interested in how we can transition online to help especially yung local businesses, our next speaker will help you with the digital tools that they offer to LGUs. So now, on to our next speaker. He is the Chief Executive Officer of Talino Venture Labs, an inclusion tech venture builder that accelerates inclusive growth by building technology and startups that cater to underserved needs and is on a mission to create a more sustainable world. He is also the Executive Chairman of Amihan Global Strategies, a leader in digital transformation in Southeast Asia as well as founder of DevCon Philippines, the largest community of tech professionals in the country. Amid the COVID-19 pandemic, he and his teams in Talino, Amihan, and DevCon stepped up to rapidly build and deploy crisis response technologies that have served the Philippine government and millions of Filipinos affected by the pandemic. 
to share with us some digital tools that can help LGUs cope in the new normal, please welcome Mr. Winston Damarillo of Talino Venture Labs. Great. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, magandang hapon. Um, can you hear me okay, Winona? Can, is, the, is my audio coming in clear? Yes, Pa. Great. Thank you. Uh, let me just prepare my slides really quick. Um, so, um, uh, let's see. Okay, now it's good. All right. So, uh, magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. Um, I'm actually calling from Los Angeles, so magandang gabi na from here. Uh, it's it's a pleasure to uh, have the opportunity to speak to all of you. No, uh, I am uh, uh, actually was in the Philippines most of the pandemic. Kakalis ko lang, and uh, uh, it's it's really a, a very challenging time for everyone. No, so um, I wanted to introduce the two companies that uh, that uh, we are um, representing. So unang una. Um, uh, Talino Venture Labs is we're a software company here in the Philippines. Uh, we were built by Phil Ams, uh, na bumalik sa Pilipinas to uh, to build our businesses there. And then ka partner namin to si Devcon, which is a nonprofit uh, startup that I that I started ten years ago, uh, based on volunteer Filipino developers um, in the Philippines. So um, a quick background lang uh, when the Pandemic started uh, when we are about to enter ECQ. We were um, called upon by the IATF to help. At uh, we were fortunate; no, about a thousand Filipino developers volunteered from all over the world, and we started uh, on the early stage. The una namin ginawa is a technology called Rapid Bus. Uh, if you guys uh, are familiar with this, yung mga dumadaan at dumatawid sa NCR, uh, we created a platform to help uh, the PNP and DTI uh, to ensure that uh, we digitize our checkpoints. So uh, prior to March, we didn't experience about pandemic. So all of a sudden, we became experts of it. So we have about a million people that was served by Rapid Pass. Uh, and it was our first parang, uh, mass scale technology that na we used in the Philippines. Uh, and if you also have heard of Relief Agad, ito yung ating ang national amelioration platform, that was the other thing we built. No? Uh, ito naman a ka partner namin si USAID. And we developed uh, this technology that served about 8 million Filipinos uh, to receive their amelioration. Uh, and in addition to receiving it and registering it online, uh, we also helped uh, ensure that yung mga unbanked nating uh, kapwa Pilipino ay nagkaroon ng, ng bank accounts. No? So those were the two like large projects that we built for the government. We also built uh, uh, platform for the Office of Civil Defense para sa mga donasyon. And then finally, we created this hotspot uh, technology, hot heat mapping na ngayon ginihingi na ng mga LGU, which is actually a, a tracking system to determine kung saan yung may, may mga hotspot for COVID. So um, we've been spending a lot of time. Uh, we work quite closely with the government. No? So uh, out of the technologies that we ended up building are uh, unang una libre for everyone has been donated by the volunteers of Devcon kasama din po namin sa mga sumuporta are the conglomerates no si Aboytes group uh TCC of SM group and uh many pangilinan from MVP uh, from the pangilinan group of companies so um most of what I'm going to talk about have uh, been sanctioned by the IATF uh, from a national government standpoint uh, ka partner namin si Department of Tourism Department of Trade and Industry, uh, Department of ICT and the OST no, to make sure that these technologies are appropriate and safe for use sa ating mga mamamayan. At uh, lahat po ng mga teknolohiyan na to ay uh, uh, pinapilot din namin sa mga uh, provinces. So for now, uh, uh, ginagamit namin sila for Ilocos Norte and Ilocos Sur. Um, we're now piloting in Sumbuanga del Norte. Uh, also in the province of, of Kamigin. Uh, and there are a few of the things we're doing. Uh, we also uh, had the opportunity to work very closely with the LGU of uh, Bataan and specifically um, in Balanga. Okay, so um, the technologies that we're going to share today, yung pag natin, is really what we call the, the portfolio for reopening economies at the LGU level. So um, 
after we've completed our pandemic technologies, uh, ang hinihiling naman sa amin ng IATFA, pagtungo na naman yung uh, teknolohiya para sa pagbubukas ng mga negosyo. No? And talagang kapartner natin sa mga initiative na to ay mga LGU. So, unang-una at pinaka-importante is to ensure that people feel safe. So itong technology na SafePass, which I will talk to a little bit, is really a, both a contact tracing platform and an incident mitigation and management system. So I think key to everything we do, no? bago kabuhayan, buhay muna. Uh, so we built a technology uh, in partnership with DTI and DOT para magkaroon tayo ng technology para yung mga establishments within the LGUs ay, ay madigitize yung kanilang pag-monitor, pag-contact trace, and more importantly, pag-track, pag-incident mitigate and manage no, kung meron man tayong COVID incidents. I'll talk a little bit about that. But sa gitna po ng ating pandemic technology, yun po yung pinakauna naming uh, ginawa at una naming uh, uh, finocus. No? Um, a couple of questions kanina nakakatuwa. No? Kasi a lot of these questions are really parang uh, a lot of these technologies are actually coming from our LGU uh, partnerships. Uh, we've also had an opportunity to prototype uh, a software technology called DG Palenque. Ito po ay initiative ng uh, LGUs ng Bataan. And it really started to ask the question, ano, paano na lang kung kailangan kong kumuha ng groceries at ayaw kong bumaba ng bahay, ayaw kong mag-travel? Uh, paano naman din o kung gusto ko na parang minimal lang yung contact na hindi ako ma-expose sa, sa COVID. So we built something in Bataan uh, which we're now launching to multiple LGUs in partnership with PLDT. I think mga 400 LGUs yung kausap namin last time. Uh, to really bring what's called community e-commerce. Ito yung importante. No? Community e-commerce means uh, merong madaling gamitin at mura or halos libre uh, na pag-order digitally from the homes into very small stores, kahit sari-sari stores, unang-una. Pangalawa is paano mo isali yung mga uh, na-displace sa ating mga community kagaya ng motorcycle drivers or mga tricycle. No? So, sa Bataan, subukan natin ito na napadigitize natin hindi lang yung mga groceries but yung palengke nila at nagamit din natin yung mga locally available uh, delivery capability, jeepney, yung tricycle, kahit yung motor. So yun na, yun yung una naming na ginawang technology. Pangalawa, alam natin magbubukas yung mga negosyo, kailangan natin ng puhunan. Uh, nakipag-partner naman kami sa pinakamalaking um, microfinance institution ng Pilipinas. Uh, in fact, joint venture kami para gumawa ng madali lang na paraan para makakuha ng puhunan yung ating maliliit na negosyo. Sari-sari stores, uh, bakeries, you know, mga uh, even the agricultural sector na parang kahit na uh, pabukas pa lang tayo at medyo wala pang masyadong dima, naghahanda na yung mga negosyo for their capital. So, uh, ginawa po natin si Tita Susi ng Asenso. Uh, it's a very simple uh, AI-aided chatbot na yung mga umuutang po ang puhunan ay nakakuha sila kahit sa uh, comfort of their home. Um, In-insure din natin na uh, yung mga transaksyon, yung mga, yung mga uh, contracts ay nagaganap kahit uh, hindi tayo umalis ng bahay. Uh, so suwerte naman tayo si uh, Supreme Court has agreed to allow people to be uh, doing remote notarization so gumawa din kami ng technology na parang yung mga kontrata natin pwede nang pirmahan uh, digitally at uh, kasama po yung pagnotaryo ay pwede na rin gawing digitally. Nabanggit din po kanina na uh, isa sa mga hardly hit uh, sectors ng ating industry and economy si mga restaurants. So totoo po yan. Uh, kaya nga po si Department of Trade and Tourism naman under the leadership of Secretary Berna uh, talagang uh, natiusap at uh, nag-focus na gumawa tayo ng paraan para kahit papano uh, ma-turn on naman yung uh, pagkain sa labas. No? So uh, ginawa po namin isang technology naman tawag na eat-in. Uh, this is to allow people to order from home, to have digital menus, at kung uh, sakasaling magsisimula na tayong bumalik sa mga restaurant, uh, pwede tayong pumunta doon with the minimum amount of contact. No? So pwede ka umorder galing sa telepono mo, pwede mong bayaran yung pagkain mo galing sa telepono mo at kakain ka na lang doon at the least possible time at the least possible contact. And I know that's 
not what our restaurants are looking for, pero <clears throat> uh, kahit pa paano, uh, at least nabibigyan ng konting panatag ng loob yung ating mga customers na pumunta. No? And then finally, uh, uh, one of our really big assets sa Pilipinas yung ating mga travel destinations. No? So we've also partnered with the Tourism Promotion Board uh, to encourage kahit pa paano yung safe tourism. So meron tayong ginagawa ngayon na uh, tourism bubbles sa Pilipinas. Ito po ay kombinasyon ng uh, pagtiyak na yung mga target destinations natin ay may sapat na kakayahan para mag-address ng COVID incidents. At they have a good practice na mapapadala yung mga turista. So uh, to complement that, para matulungan yun, uh, gumawa kami ng app <coughs> with the Tourism uh, uh, Promotions Board na meron siyang travel companion na parang makakatulong kung how to find safe places, how to have safe practices, and when possible, uh, do cashless. So, uh, dumadami naman po ito. Ito lay uh, technology lamang galing sa talino. Pero marami po ang uh, technology for LGUs. No? Kailangan lang uh, natin mag-research ng konti. At uh, uh, maganda naman sa ating mga Filipino innovators at, at uh, excited tayo sa mga ginagawa. So, ito po yung aking i-explain. Uh, Konti-konti. Kung meron tayong time, may mga videos po kami na mga examples, but we'll go through this really quick. Um, so, ang SafePass ay isang digital contact tracing, health declaration, incident management, and capacity management. Pa, ang daming sinasabi. No? Pero uh, meron po tayong dalawang apli applications na pinayagan ng IA or officially uh, sanctioned by IATF for contact tracing. Uh, una po doon yung stay safe para sa mga individuals. At si SafePass naman po ay uh, approved by as, as of IATF uh, Resolution 42 for protection of establishments. So mga opisina, mga uh, uh, restaurants, or kahit nga yung mga sasakyan, no? mga bus, magamit ng SafePass. So ginawa po natin ito para po mapadali, magiging digital yung mga health declaration form para hindi na natin gagawin yung pag-share uh, ng ballpen. <clears throat> uh, pero most importantly, para mapasunod natin yung mga regulasyon kagaya ng capacity management uh, and more importantly, pag meron po tayong insidente at magkakaroon po tayo ng insidente, yun po ay uh, maging uh, as automated as possible. So yung safe pass, uh, ginawa po yan to make sure it's super inclusive. So ang safe pass po ay available for, for as a QR code uh, para sa mga excited dun sa QR technology. Pero sinabay po namin dito ang paggamit sa Facebook Messenger para doon sa mga may smartphone at walang internet. At uh, kasama na po sa sinuportahan ng SafePass ay ang SMS para po <clears throat> kung uh, wala kang uh, smartphone o wala kang access sa internet, magagamit po pa rin ang SafePass. So apat po ang pinakaimportanteng bagay uh, na nadadala ng SafePass. No? Unang-una yung pagtulong sa mga LGU to actually do contact tracing. Uh, sa ngayon po, mababa po yung ating ratio, 1 to 5 lang uh, for uh, contact follow through. Uh, dapat daw, sabi ni Mayor Magalong, na sana 1 to 37. At ang best practice po ngayon around the world, sana po 1, 1 to 150. Mahirap po natin gawin yan kung wala tayong technology na tumutulong sa atin. So this is one of them, unang-una uh, for digital contact tracing. Pangalawa po, gusto nating tanggalin nito yung pag-fill pag out ng papel at paggamit nun. Uh, kasi po, unang-una, yung efficacy niya hindi masyadong magaling. Tatagal ang contact tracing at uh, it also introduces transfer risk no, of the virus. Uh, pangatlo, capacity planning. So since SAFAS is intended to protect facilities, uh, number one, uh, makakatulong po para mag natin na may safe distancing yung mga facilities. And uh, most important na sa LGU, Kung meron po kayong uh, mga uh, protocols and guidelines, alam natin na merong uh, nagbabantay na siya ay nasusunod. Uh, Pang-apat naman ay ginamit po natin yung natutunan natin sa rapid pass uh, at gumawa po tayo ng mga digital scanners uh, both for QR and for the SMSs para uh, yung ating mga enforcement ay magagamit sa Manila. So safe pass has been expanded uh, beyond contact tracing. Nagagamit mo na rin siya for border management. Uh, as well as quarantine management. So napalawak na po natin yung gamit ng safe pass. Uh, ito lang po ang kanyang proseso. Unang-una, mag-a-apply ka sa bahay or sa labas ng tindahan. 
uh, dadalhin mo yung uh, approval QR mo or pwede rin pong mag-print ng mga QR ang um, LGUs at yun po ay kaysa isang QR na kailangan ng mga mamamayan ay yun lang po dadalhin nila sa ating mga uh, health uh, sa ating mga facilities no, with their health declaration. Um, ito po yung pinaka-importanting uh, kakayahan ng uh, safe pass is yung pag-provide uh, po ng uh, gamit ng uh, AI and machine learning para po ating ma quickly categorize kung sino po yung may close contact, uh, close encounter at dapat po tawagan. So malaking tulong po ito sa mga LGUs kasi pwede nyo pong ikabit lahat ng mga data na nakukuha ng ating mga uh, establishments at kung sakasakaling meron tayong incident, uh, pwede nyo pong uh, magkaroon ng isang city-wide or provincial-wide view of contact tracing. Uh, kasama na po doon yung auditing and uh, reporting ng mga mga establishments. So yun po yung sa ating contact tracing no. So in everything we do in reopening, I think we want to start with safety. Kasi po ang uh, expectation po natin is itong pandemic na to ay uh, will be with us until July next year. So uh, everything we do to help our economy to turn on uh, starts with making sure our citizens feel safe. Okay, so itong DG Palengke, marami pong uh, <laughs> nagkakapaborito sa app na to, eh, no? Uh, ito po ay sinimula namin uh, initially to help Sarisari stores. Ngayon po ay lumawak na po yung gamit niya. Uh, digipalengke.com is live. Actually, ginagamit po siya ng mga LGUs ngayon. Ito po yung uh, uh, sistema na pwede niyong gamitin as an LGU to promote within your, your local market. Ang parati po naming uh, pinapabahagi dito sa, sa Digipalengke is it's community-based commerce. Tayo-tayo within the within the community, pero digital. So, number one po, yung mga sari-sari store, yung mga malilit na tindahan, mga grocery stores, kahit yung palengke, ay pwede na mag-adapt ng uh, DG palengke, unang-una. So, people can also then order digitally bago sila pumunta sa palengke or sa tindahan uh, para uh, ma-clean na lang yung panahon para sila ay ma-expose. Una. Pangalawa po, meron po din siyang sistema para mahatid yung mga na-order. At po, pwede po nating bigyan ng trabaho yung mga naka-standby na transportation uh, uh, vehicles no, ng ating mga, mga syudad or provincia. At uh, meron tong sistema na parang ginawa natin ng grab at lalamove uh, yung ating mga bayan-bayan. So, kompleto po siya. Um, <clears throat> para po siyang Shopify, pero masyado, lalo pa nating pinadali at uh, it's built uh, primarily for uh, mobile phone. Ka-partner po namin si Paymaya at ng PLDT para po ang ating mga merchants, all they need to do is get a wallet at uh, pwede na pong uh, umorder no? uh, galing dito. Napapansin po namin sa bataan na karamihan ng gumagamit ng aming Digipalengke ay mga OFWs or mga people like me who's in the US that's uh, worrying about my relatives at gusto kong padalhan ng pagkain at uh, sisigurado akong pagkain ng mapapadala, order ako from the States, di pinapadeliver ko locally. So meron siyang payment, meron siyang ordering, meron siyang catalog, meron siyang pag-coordinate na make sure na deliver yung in-order na pagkain, may fulfillment, tsaka meron din siyang marketplace. Ito naman yung parang buhin mo yung uh, uh, mga uh, tindahan sa isang lugar. no Kagaya po ng Tanong ng isang mayor natin kanina, ito po ay pwedeng gamitin pag nagtsyangge kayo or mag-marketplace kayo over the weekend uh, na as much as possible ay uh, digital, cashless, at kukunti lang yung contacts. So pwede po siya i-combine sa safe pass no? to create parang safe uh, markets. Uh, in fact, ngayong weekend na ito, uh, bumalik na po yung ating mga uh, crafts uh, uh, meetup no? sa Manila. Merong katutubo Uh, event at yun po ay gumagamit ng combination ng safe pass at Digi Palengke. So, ito po ang ating paraan no. It, 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 I think it's a good pandemic response. Pero uh, this is some technology na pag uh, sinuportahan niyo po at napalawak niyo sa ating mga siyudad at probinsya is eh, something that will improve it long term going forward na you know after the pandemic i think malaking tulong din pag napadigitize na natin po lahat ng ating mga sari-sari stores at napadigitize na natin yung pag-request ng hatid sundo at pagbayad 
ating mga transportation vehicles. So, PG Palenque is available now. Uh, it's been well tested in uh, Bataan and uh, we're now rolling this out to mga LGUs. So, si Tita Susi naman ng Asenso, kung gusto po nating umutang at uh, kailangan ng kapital at puhunan yung ating mga uh, 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 sari-sari stores at tindahan, uh, Tita Susi is now available. Uh, it's in partnership with the Card Bank. Uh, yung mga maliliit-liit na pangangailangan sa capital ay eh, pwede na patugunan ni, ano, ni Tita Susi. So papakilala din namin siya at some point. Uh, ginawa po namin to para madali lang talaga at naka siya po ay running on Facebook Messenger para po doon sa mga walang internet at uh, walang load uh, para sila ay maka uh, take advantage ng capital. Uh, yung sign secure naman uh, para sa mga LGU <clears throat> kung gusto nating bawasan yung pagpunta sa munisipyo para sa mga official government signature or pag-apply ng mga business permit, pwede na po nating gawin uh, dito sa ating sign secure. No? Ito po yung ginagamit na namin sa DOT at saka sa uh, DOST. Yung mga kontrata at mga mawa namin ngayon ay uh, sign na using digital signature. Um, Kanina po, maraming tanong about restaurants. Ito po yung uh, uh, specifically yung IETF uh, 42 noong June 2. Uh, dinesign po namin to in partnership with DTI and DOT. Ay yung ano naman, yung digital solutions para po kahit tayo medyo natatakot pang pumunta sa ating mga restaurant. Gusto po namin bigyan ng hunting panatag ng loob yung mga uh, customers ng restaurant na makapunta at uh, para po doon gumawa kami ng eat-in. No? So ang Purpose po ng itin, again, connected po sila lahat. No? Sisimula ka sa safe pass, gusto mong pumunta sa isang restaurant. Uh, bago ka pumunta sa restaurant, pwede mo nang tignan yung menu ng restaurant na yun. At uh, pwede mo nang bayaran para hindi ka napipila sa cashier. Uh, at pagdating nyo po sa restaurant, yung cashier po alam na po nila na in-order mo. At anong table ka uupo, pwede mo na lang sabihin dito. At saka yung pagkain mo, iahatid na lang po. So yung Sistema po na yan, minimize the time you are in the restaurant. Nakakatulong po yan sa mga restaurant kasi kung babawasan po yung kanilang capacity, mas maigi po sa kanila na mas maraming nakakapunta. Shorten yung kanilang cycle. No? So kung nag-pre-order ka at nag pre ka ahead of time, pag upo mo, medyo andyan na yung pagkain mo. Instead of spending one hour, baka 30 minutes na lang. Kung yung restaurant na yan ay binigyan lang ng 50% capacity, it kind of gives that restaurant the ability to, to uh, uh, still have as much business as they can. Ito po ay tatlong klaseng teknolohiya. Unang-una, uh, the app para sa mga umuorder ng pagkain. Pangalawa, yung uh, platform na nasa sa likod uh, ng kusina para malaman nila kung ano yung mga order. At then pangatlo, yung paghanap po kung saan restaurants gustong punong puntahan. Eh, pwede po ito din i-combine dun sa ating DG Palengke para kung gusto nyo na maipahadid sa motor or tricycle or jeepney ng, ng city, pwede po natin kabit-kabit itong mga technology na to. Finally po, uh, dun sa mga tourist spots, ito po ay uh, proyekto ni Secretary Berna at ni uh, CEO Otonet ng uh, TPB. Uh, parang ayan namin mag up <laughs> ng tourism this year na hindi lang tayo mag-aabang for next year. So may mga kukunting lugar tayo na wanted to make sure na domestic tourism is still alive. Uh, gusto po nating tulungan with technology. Uh, Unang-una po is to ensure na alam mo yung pathway to the tourist place. Alam mo yung mga safety protocols, kagaya ng quarantine kung may kailangan man. Uh, yun mga advisory of uh, COVID incidents ando doon. Tsaka kung saan ko po, saan ka pupunta kung kailangan mo ng tulong, nandun din. No? So again, pinag-combine po natin lahat ng technology kasama din dito sa ating tourism app na uh, sponsored by DOT <coughs> is yung cashless interface. So kung ayaw mo magdala ng pera at humawak ng pera, uh, yung cashless system andito na po din sa ating tourism app. So uh, unang-una, uh, lalong gumanda yung ating tourist spots kasi medyo kukonti ang buong bisita. So para doon sa medyo malalakas ang loob at gusto pa rin uh, ma-experience ang Philippines, uh, we are trying to make it as safe as possible between now and until we have a vaccine. Kung yung city nyo po ay is a tourist spot, uh, let us know para po may sali natin 
dito sa ating uh, tourist bubble at hindi lang po yan tour guide uh, we also need to work with you on the protocols no for a safe uh, destination ng ating tourism so minamadali ko to lahat para meron tayong time for question and answer no pero kami po sa Talino at sa uh, DevCon uh, kasama po ng aming uh, kapartner sa gobyerno DTI and DOT talagang nagpo-focus sa reopening ng ating economies And at the same time, underlying po dun, uh, we want to make sure safety is in the forefront of everything. Kaya po, safe pass yung nasa gitna ng lahat. At lahat po ng technology na ito ay libre para sa mga LGU. At uh, kami po, hindi lamang magbibigay ng libreng software, meron din kaming team na tutulong sa pag-train at tutulong sa pag-health ng information dissemination sa mga cities. Uh, so yun lang. Thank you. Uh, and... Uh, Uh, if you have any questions, let us know. Thank you. Thank you very much po, Sir Winston and Talino team for sharing with us yung mga bagong app. This would be very helpful to our mayors and their constituents. Siguro for our first question po, Sir Winston, can you share with our mayors how can they avail these apps? Uh, Doon po sa dulo ng aking slide at eh, ilalagay po namin ulit dito sa sa ating, uh, ating Zoom chat. No? Si Carol po ay ang aming in charge ng government affairs. Uh, siya, po yung, uh, siya po yung nakikipag-coordinate sa ating four pilot provinces. Uh, siya po yung ating uh, main contact. Ang numero at email po niya ay nasa ating chat box. Alright, thank you po. Isasaan din po namin sa inyo yan after this webinar. Mayors, anyone po who would like to ask a question? Uh, Wayona? Mayor Rita, go ahead. Yes, uh, good afternoon everyone and uh, to Sir Winston, uh, did you mention that uh, these apps are for free to LGU? Thank you. That's my question, Wayona. Thank you very much. Sorry, and question is, is it free to LGUs? Yes, sir. Opo, uh, the safe passport is free for the LGUs. Uh, yung eat in naman uh, is free for the small businesses within your cities. Um, yung DG Palenque then is free for the LGUs to coordinate. Uh, so lahat po ng technology na uh, inexplain ko kanina eh, we we created uh, ano, parang uh, it's free for the LGUs to implement. So well, thank you very much, and uh, we hope uh, we can avail of it as soon as possible. Sige po, uh, let us know lang. For now, uh, medyo nasagad yung team sa apat na provincial pilots pero malapit na po silang matapos. So let okay. us know ahead uh, para po may schedule namin. So uh, sa Tarlac po kami. So maybe uh, uh, kaya natin or the LIP uh, would be able to uh, work it out for us. Wayona? Sige, let us know po. Sige, magsimula po kami sa Norte, pababa. <laughs> Yung dalawang Ilocos po ay uh, nagsisimula na sa atin. <laughs> ah, okay, salamat po. Thank you. Yes, yeah, sure po. We will connect you po with Sir Winston and his team. Anyone else po na gusto magtanong? Uh, for the next question po, Sir Winston, is there any estimated time po or how long does it take for the onboarding ng apps? Uh, we always advise na ang pinakaunang i-implement ay ang safe pass. No? So, um, yan po na-implement incrementally. So, kagaya po ng ating uh, test sa Ilocosur, Uh, on the first 48 hours, nasubukan na kaagad nila sa provincial government yung safe pass. And then ngayon po, uh, pinagplanuhan na namin to use it as a border protocol platform and a quarantine platform. Tapos nagkakaroon po kami ng guidelines na ginagawa on how they are recommending for the local establishments to use it. So madali po siyang simulan at then, uh, and then siyempre po kailangan sabayan ng government guidelines yung paggamit ng technology yun po eh uh, takes time kasi pinagpaplanuhan niya ng provincial board 
uh, paminsan-minsan baka kailangan pa ng executive order. Depende lang sa how the LGU wants to implement it. Pero yung pag-implement ng technology, uh, madali po siya. It's 48 hours to, to get it started. Uh, lahat po ng technology is on the cloud. So wala pong kailangan bilhin na servers. Uh, kailangan lang po ay mag-procure ng mga mobile phones uh, for the scanners na say pass. Uh, pwede po i-reuse yan. Pwede rin gamitin yun sa DG Palenque or sa e uh, So pwede po siyang multi-purpose. Alright. Thank you po. Hey, yours. Baka po may tanong pa kayo or clarifications on the apps. Now is the time to ask. Yeah, I, well, yun, uh, I just want to say something to Mr. Winston. Uh, Mr. Winston, uh, in our LGU, we are already using the QR uh, through the Viber. Is it the same? Uh, hindi po, ma'am. Uh, yung yung ati pong ginagamit na QR ay tinatawag na encrypted QR. Yung nababasa po ng Viber, yun po yung open access QR. Uh, kaya po sila hindi medyo compatible kasi po uh, may pagka uh, kailangan po natin yung security ng ano ng ng QR po na hindi nababasa ng kahit sinong scanner lang po. Uh, so they're different. Uh, pero madali naman po i-integrate po yung data nyo tsaka yung paggamit ng SafePass. Okay, thank you. Alright, thank you Mayor Lita. Meron pa po bang gusto magtanong? Alright, if wala na po, uh, after this webinar, we will be sending you yung details po ng contact person from Talino team. Para sa mga interested mayors po, you can start with the onboarding of the apps that you want to adopt. Once again, thank you very much po, Sir Winston. And may we request again our mayors to turn on their video para makapag-photo up po ulit tayo. Okay, ready po. One, two, three. Ito pa po. One, two, three. Okay, and that wraps up our webinar. Thank you again, Sir Winston, Sir Toby Claudio, for joining us here today. And for the closing remarks, maybe call on the lead convener of Kaya Natin, Mr. Arvick. Good afternoon, mayors, and uh, uh, thank you again to our speakers, uh, okay, Sir Toby, Claudio, of course, our friends from Talino Ventures. Uh, I'd like to make mention, aside from Sir Winston, my good friend, Nines Terol. Uh, si Nines has been a very, very good friend uh, for uh, more than 20 years now. No? So uh, we're very happy that I'm, I get to work again with Nines Terol. So thank you, uh, Nines. And... Sir Winston for the time and for sharing your expertise as well, as well to, of course, to Sir Toby for sharing that wonderful insight about what's happening right now in businesses and how LGUs can really help. Um, to our mayors, uh, uh, we hope that uh, this afternoon's event um, will help you in terms of doing your own share to propel the local economy. Um, ang ganda ng insights ni uh, ni Sir Toby kanina about business, uh, if we don't get back to normal or a little semblance of what normal is, it will be very hard to preserve uh, jobs. No? And at the same time, um, um, we not only lose people to COVID, but we will only eventually all lose uh, many people in terms of their employment and their productivity. No? And uh, eventually, you will that, that will be a domino effect. You will see poverty rates uh, soaring. You will see hunger hunger uh, soaring in our country. So I think people have people can see that already now. You have millions of Filipinos who are unemployed. Uh, at the same time, what Sir Winston presented today was a very good insight about the use of technology uh, right now to as we adapt to the changing times. We need to create uh, make use of this technology to at least uh, mitigate the effects of uh, COVID-19 in our own communities. 
Um, so I'd like to again thank, of course, our speakers uh, this afternoon. Thank you as well to our mayors. Uh, mayors, may mga, mayroon pa tayong um, next part. So please uh, stay on um, after this closing remarks. Uh, and then uh, at the same time, we'd like to thank, of course, our organizers, Sila Winona, for continuing to do their best to bring you the best speakers to help you in your role as the uh, leaders of your own communities. Alam mo sa totoo lang, sinasabi ko ito parate, ang totoong mga bayani dito sa nangyayari sa COVID, aside from our medical frontliners, are actually the LG officials. Um, sobrang totoo yun. Uh, kasi kayo yung in a way nasabak dito eh. Uh, kayo yung namang problema <laughs> pag may pumapasok ng LSIs. Kayo yung namang problema pag uh, tumataas yung mga COVID, pag nagkakaroon ng outbreaks sa communities ninyo, sa barangays ninyo. And we've seen a lot of mayors actually get infected with COVID-19. Um, so we, re we really see mayors that are on the ground that are really trying their very best to um, stop this pandemic and its effects. So we are, we'd like to again commend all of you mayors for continuing to keep the faith. Um, and uh, we will try our very best to give you the best uh, linkages, the best partners, uh, the best speakers to help you with your jobs as local chief executives. Mahirap ang laban na to, pero kung magtutulungan tayong lahat, uh, kakayanin natin. So again, on behalf of Kaya Natin Movement, um, thank you again to our speakers. Thank you as well to our partners and Miguel Corporation for continuing to support our Deep uh, Mayor's Fellowship Program. So mayors, please stay on. We